So this is a, another of Poundland's 2016 Illuminated Delights. I always said solar delights, but it's not actually solar power. It's just battery operated with these little, two little, um, I think it's two triple A's. Yes, it is. And inside this unit, it has two colour changing LEDs. I can pull this off and show you. It's got the two fairly large adapters. I think they're, are they 10 mm? I think they're 8 mm LEDs. Um, and they're both, because they've got, both got their own colour changing chip, um, it, they just go at their own speed. They don't go in sync and they just, each of them morphs through red, green and blue. And as a result of the fact they go out of sync, it actually creates quite interesting patterns. They also project onto the end of the thing quite nicely. Uh, you can also see here the ref the shadow of each LED from the other one being lit. So um, yeah, it's it's actually quite a nice little light and it seems to, it, it's quite bright to look at. Uh, it has an odd resemblance to a butt plug, but let's not go there. Um, and you can see that the unit has been uh, blow moulded where they've actually pinched a sort of, they fed through a sort of tube of the plastic pinched the end and then put it into a mould and then inflated it against the mould to create the classic sort of blow moulded packaging. So um, let's take a look at the inside of this. So the inside is very simple, I mean it really is just those two LEDs and a switch and the battery connector. So the way it, it does a really good job of diffusing the light um, and I have to say the choice of just two double A cells or triple A cells is not that great because the blue and green chips in these colour changing LEDs, they tend to require about two and a half to three ish volts to run at full brightness, whereas the red chip will quite happily run at much lower voltage. It will run way down to about two volts. And as a result of that, usually with these colour changing LED things, if you run them on batteries, the blue and green will gradually get dimmer and dimmer, but the red will then just become the dominant colour and sort of take over. But I quite like the idea of using this just as a decorative sort of night light by replacing the two colour changing LEDs with just a single diffused warm white LED uh, which should run uh, depending on the, the choice of LED um, and its forward voltage because there's variation between them. Uh, if I choose one with an appropriate value I should be able to get it to run a modest length of time on a set of batteries and that will just make this thing glow very gently and my colour choice would probably be warm white so I'm going to make that modification right now. So I've dug out uh, the LED I'm going to use which is a, a straw hat warm white LED. If you look on, on eBay for these if you type in 100 4.8mm uh, straw hat LED or just 100 millimeter straw hat LED. That this the name straw hat just seems to generically apply to these tiny little LEDs with the sort of curved top. I, I really like these because even at very low current, you just get a very nice dot of light. And the existing arrangement here is that there's a plastic plate that's just held in by two click-on tabs. So if I pop those off, oop, there we go. And I desolder the leads off that the existing LED or LEDs. So that's one off, and that's the second one off. And I'm just going to crop the leads of these LEDs. That's probably the easiest way to get out. So I'll just crop these off, but I'll leave the enough length that I can reuse those LEDs because they are quite nice actually. They're quite nice little. They've got very smooth colour changing action. It's quite unusual to see the uh, eight millimeter type LEDs. I think that's the eight millimeter. It looks like it. It's quite a distinctive. Uh, it's an unusual LED inside. I'm not sure. Are you going to be able to see this? It's a different construction from normal. It just looks really different. There's normally the plateau with the chip in it. It just seems different. Uh, I think it's because the negative el electrode has a much flatter surface for those chips. It's quite neat. It's quite visual. These uh, colour changing chips have a little in integrated circuit in these colour changing LEDs, should I say, have a little integrated circuit inside and the three chips, red, green and blue. And all you have to do is supply power and the 
the colour change. And you can find these also on eBay if you do a search for 5mm RGB LED and then type slow. That's usually the keywords that come up with these uh, the slow ones. But you also get fast, which are the ones that sort of cycle through quickly and, and flash as well. There's quite a wide variety of them, and sometimes you get don't get the one you wanted. Now, the temptation is to actually drill two more holes in this to allow me to uh, put the LED dead center, but I have already tried it in this, and it doesn't seem to matter too much where it's put. So all I'm going to do now is I'm going to thread this LED through any of those two holes, and I'm going to bend the leads back, because that's what holds it in place. And I might as well just clip it in back in place now. Now, this terminal is coming off the negative battery terminal. I can tell it because it's got the spring in it, so this is going to be the negative wire. So let's put the negative wire in that direction. Oh, that's not actually going to work, is it? Uh, then I can just fold it out that way then. OK, that'll do. In fact, I could actually put that lead straight over onto the um, the battery terminal. I may do that, in fact. That saves ha even having that wire. Uh, do I have any solder handy? Oh, that that's n wasn't really thought out. There it is. So I'll actually remove this wire. Very sizzly, that's that uh, super extra corrosive flux they use for the lead-free solder. And I'll solder that lead directly on. with lead-based solder. So that's that con connection made. All I need to do now is, keeping this one at this tab at the other side, is to hold the commoning tab between the two batteries. So I want to stay away from that. So I shall bend that up a little bit. In fact, I'll just bend it right round and go over to the other side. And flow some solder onto there. And reflow this and tack that on there, and theoretically, if I've not screwed up, and I have screwed up in the past, uh, theoretically that should be ready just to stick the batteries in and operate. So let's stick the batteries in. There we go. Nice golden warm white. So now if I put this cover on uh, and turn the lights off, hold on, I shall just do that right now and do the automatic gain control thing. There we go. Uh, the automatic gain control has just completely chosen a different shade of white, but that's okay. Just You're just going to have to imagine it being golden white because that's uh, what it is. Hold on, let's see if I can trick this. Let's see if I can trick the... If I point this uh, cold white light in here and I Calibrate the camera on that, and then I put this in, and then just turn it up till it matches roughly the intensity. That's better. See, that's what I'm actually seeing here. That's a warm golden white. And as you can see, the, the light distribution is fairly even round it. The only oddity in this is the fact that where they've pinched the plastic at the end in the actual manufacturer uh, before blow moulding it, and it, because it's tapered in, and the plastic hasn't spread so much, it's just a little bit darker at the tip, and it's got that sort of pattern there. But yeah, that's quite nice. That's actually surprisingly bright as well. I wonder uh, how long that will last on nickel hydride cells. The voltage of the, with two uh, batteries, the voltage of the nickel hydride will start round about the three volt region and then it will drop down to towards 2.4, but the LED will probably peter out well before it even gets down there. Um, but uh, that said, I've got some other lights around the house that uh, do work like that and they just seem to last for literally months. You know, they're st they're not bright, but they're still glowing gently. So that's probably what I'm going to do with that right now. I'm going to give this a wee go. So um, yeah, I like this. I like the way it turned out a lot. And of course, I've got my two uh, other colour changing LEDs to boot. Yeah, good result. A few other thoughts on this. Uh, something I should have mentioned before. The gallium nitride LEDs, that's the blues, greens and whites, tend to operate uh, at a higher voltage than the other technologies like red, orange and yellow LEDs, which are gallium arsenide. If you want to use the gallium arsenide LEDs, 
uh, red, orange or yellow, you're going to have to add a resistor in line. It can be added anywhere in line with the LED circuit. And the choice of value will be 47 ohms for sort of full brightness, or if you want it's a wee bit uh, longer battery life, you could use a 100 ohm resistor, and that will protect the LED from overcurrent. The gallium nitride LEDs like this, uh, they tend to round about 20 milliamps. Their forward voltage tends to be about 3 volts anyway, so they can and often are used directly across 3 volts in the case of this with just two AAA or AA cells. But it's worth noting that, you know, if you use the other ones, then um, the other technology, then you, you, you have to use a resistor. Otherwise, the LED will just try and pass as much current as possible and it could actually damage the LED. So you, you'll be fine with blue, greens, whites and ultraviolet type LEDs. But with the red, orange and yellow LEDs, you will have to use that resistor. The um, LEDs, the gallium nitride LEDs, will probably go out round about 2.5 volts-ish, which is, you know, it's not going to have made much of an impact on the life of these batteries. It will still last for a long time. But when the LED finally gets too dim to the point you think, oh, well, I'm going to change the batteries, then keep in mind the batteries will still have plenty of capacity left that you can use them for um, other applications or, or even with a jewel thief or something like that. You could even put a jewel thief in here, I suppose, really. Though, yeah, you could actually, you could, you'd only need to use one cell. Uh, a, a thing that's worth mentioning about the Jewel Thief, I get asked quite a lot if it can be used across a higher voltage, like 3 volts or 9 volts. And the answer with the Jewel Thief is that uh, the, the higher voltage, as soon as you exceed the forward voltage of the LED, the current's just going to go straight through the little inductor and light the LED directly. So that using a higher voltage isn't recommended. In this case, if you wanted to use something like a Jewel Thief, you'd probably have to just use one cell in here. These are just crappy old nickel metal hydride cells out of solar lights um, and just tag from one lead to the other. So you could use this as a sort of Jewel Thief type light. I mentioned earlier on that I, I thought these looked different, these LEDs, than normal. And you know what it is? It's just purely the size. It's the fact that instead of trying to cram all the red, green, blue chips into just tiny area, they've actually got tons of room because it's a large LED, so they've spread them about a bit, and it looks really good for for that, you know, as a result. I'm going to provide links in the description, um, which are search engines uh, links, like, not search engine links, search links for ebay.com, and they're going to be for things like the straw hat LEDs, they're going to be for diffused LEDs, they're going to be for the colour changing LEDs. And I'll just provide generic search links that have all the magic keywords preloaded that will let you uh, find the Chinese sellers for the sort of bulk packs of the LEDs. Because, they're, you know, they're not necessarily the best quality LEDs, but, you know, getting some bulk packs from China is cheap and, you know, they're ideal for experimenting and playing about with and doing stuff like this you'll generally find they're good enough for this application. So um, I will add those links below. And in fact, if, if you don't see them in the description, then someone nudge me to remind me to do that. But I should remember to put them in. But yeah, I like the way this turned out. I really do. It's, it's quite a stylish light. It's a very easy modification to do uh, to just a standard Poundland um, light.